Great to be with you this morning and elections are just around the corner. In fact, the 14th of October is just over five weeks away and there are 20 parties registered. New Conservatives is one of those and like the name suggests, it is known as a Conservative political party in New Zealand. And this morning I have the privilege of chatting to New Conservative Party leader Helen Horton. Kia ora Helen, thank you for joining me today. Morena Cat, it's really nice to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, Helen, I'd have to say this. You know, it's been a couple of challenging years for the party. The party has undergone a name change in the last decade. So what has been your approach to leadership in light of all of this? Oh, Cat, um, I'm not sure if you're aware. I've only been on board the party for the last probably five years. So I came on board uh, about a year before the last election and I became the candidate for Christchurch East. And since then, obviously, um, after the last election, we had a change of leadership. So there were some changes made around that. We didn't have a leader for about a year. And then uh, myself and Ted Johnson stepped up to co-lead the party uh, and recently that has uh, changed again to be um, myself as the sole leader. So yeah, like all parties, we do, all parties have changes. They all go through change of leadership, uh, change, name change. I, I kind of look at it like this. I link it to um, me being a mother for my children. And, and I don't know, are you a parent? Yes, I am a parent, a parent yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think about it how we have our children for a certain amount of time, but they're not really ours. So we look after them while we have them. And uh, I kind of think the same about me being the leader now or any leader of a party. It's like we've got that privilege uh, for a certain amount of time. And then, you know, that changes, obviously. But while we're here, hopefully we do the best that we can yeah. in that role. Stewardship, I think, is what you're referring to, stewarding That's resources. Good. So let's talk yeah. about party policies and aims and goals. So let's talk about the essence of what your party is about and what differentiates new conservatives from some of the other minor parties. Um, well, look, we're a values-based party. We value the family, self-reliance and limited government, smaller government. Um, being a values-based party means the voting public actually knows precisely what our principles and our priorities are. It's in our name as well, conserve. So we seek to conserve all the good things in New Zealand. And that includes uh, honouring the Christian heritage of New Zealand for all people. New, uh, New Conservatives have a strong, committed, um, we're committed to addressing the needs of all of our people. We have a strong foundation and a clear vision for New Zealand. Longevity is something that we have that some of the other tiny parties haven't had. So we've been around for 12 years and we have a comprehensive, solid set of policies that signal commitment to the country's future rather than short-term gains, Kat. Let's we have talk a dedicated about, team. Let's talk oh, about sorry. some of those policies. No, you've touched yeah. on them. So if you were to get into Parliament, what policies would you be pushing? Like if they came to the negotiating table and you knew, look, some of them won't get through, but some we absolutely must push forward. What are those policies going to be? Yeah, I think it depends on which ministries that we're given, but we will ensure to push back all the liberal policy we can and forward the conservative policy, of course. For me personally, it would be around education. Education's key for me. I was I taught for 16 years. Uh, specifically, the sexuality education is a huge issue, um, but also life life issues. Um, the first thing I want to do is ensure that the unborn child has the personhood status. You know, we have mountains in New Zealand that have personhood status and yet the unborn child does not have that right. And I think that's inhumane that uh, we do not have this right for every unborn child. The difference between life and death as a preborn is if you are loved or not. And that seems to be justified because you cannot see that life inside the womb. Look, I ask your listeners, Kate, if there are any out there who are pro-choice, I kind of put it out to them and say, well, you know, just because you were wanted as a baby, does that give you the right to take away 
my life or those like myself who were who were not wanted uh, and treat us like we're not valuable because every life is valuable and we must fight for it. So they, yeah, it, like I said, education and life issues are huge for us. Big question. So let's talk about education. So what would you change at the moment? Because we've heard that there are a lot of issues with literacy and academic performance in this country. What would you change and what, what how would your policy um, make these changes happen? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a huge topic, and I'll try and do this just in a really short time. So we have got issues with literacy and numeracy. However, um, we've seen both main parties bring out things like Labor brought out. They were talking about Argentinese uh, talking about phonics. Um, Nationals talking about um, teaching reading and writing or arithmetic, one out each. Both of those things are not going to solve what issues we have. It's a lot bigger than that. We have major issues. I think the revelation, uh, sorry, the Ministry of Education needs a revolution. We need to completely um, uphaul what's happening. I'd like to know who's actually in the Ministry of Education and what their qualifications are and just the thoughts around some of the things that they're bringing in. Because as an educator for the, like I said, 16 years, we constantly had to, um, you know, they were bringing in new things all the time. And if you know anything about children, you, they had to consolidate the knowledge. And it's really important to think about the basic stuff, the knowledge. Um, and, and, you know, when we're constantly refreshing all the time, it's like we're experimenting with each generation and, and they don't have that opportunity to consolidate knowledge. And that's so important. So we go back to the basics, um, but also put the control back into the teachers and the school leaders. They know how to teach, Kat. They, that's what they go to Teachers College for. They know how to teach how children how to read and write. That's not the issue. Um, there's much bigger issues, as you know, societal issues, they are huge. And that, that, that we've got three things that are really important when it comes to education, and that is a strong family. If children are not in a strong family, then they're not going to be able to be in a space at school to learn. Um, the other thing is around uh, excellence. You know, we've got high school teachers now, science and maths teachers that are saying that the new refreshed curriculum is being dumbed down. So. Yeah, you know, we need excellence. I mean, our society, you know, our people are capable. We used to be the top in education. Uh, the problem is we're focused too much on parents, sorry, teachers needing to be parents now, and that's not what they're there for. They're not there to fix broken families, and we'll talk more about the broken families later. Yes, but there's a lot of also, issues facing yeah. New Zealanders at the moment, and even education at the primary school level is very difficult if children don't have enough food in their bellies to learn as well. But we have had a tough couple of years as a nation. I mean, globally, it's been a tough couple of years with the global pandemic, but as a nation, we've had a few climate disasters and the situation in state of emergency down in Southland and Queenstown right now brings fresh memories of the Auckland anniversary floods. And of course, there are a lot of issues with crime. We've talked about education and we are in a cost of living crisis. So what are the issues facing New Zealanders right now that are the most urgent to you and the new Conservative Party? Uh, yeah, so you've mentioned and we've talked about education. That's up there. That's key. One of the top crime, youth well-being, and the cost of living. Now, all parties are talking about the cost of living. They're talking about education and crime. But I want to go a bit deeper because all of these issues are priorities, but most of them stem from broken families and broken people people who are not connected in the fatherless homes. That's not talked about. It's not discussed at government level. And there is the economic economy, sorry, that is actually um, impacted by all of the broken families. The education, crime and youth wellbeing are all in interconnected and they're influenced by the factors like broken family, lack of parental involvement and economic instability. So all of those things are interconnected and we have to address all of them all at the same time. Um, there's, you know, it's not going to happen, it's not going to be fixed overnight, but the people in government now who have broken those systems are not the ones to fix it. For example, take broken families in education. Children from broken families, have, they face surmountable challenges in the educational journey and that just continues as a... Um, 
dysfunction and a generational dysfunction. So the lack of stable and supportive home environments is something that we really focus on in New Conservative. We want all people to have healthy family homes. Otherwise, it's just going to lead to more academic struggles, uh, lower educational attainment and a cycle of disadvantage. So that also goes into crime as well. We've got research that has shown the correlation between broken families and the high rate of youth crime. We, we see that across everywhere. It doesn't matter where you live, there's youth crime. Uh, ram raids are huge. You know, I mean, even at my own home, we've had a few things stolen. My son's cars have been broken into, their work vehicles. Everybody is impacted. Um, there's a lack of positive role models. Uh, there's reduced supervision for these young people. And look, no child is born a criminal. There's all the facts that you talked about, we've been through a lot, and Christchurch knows about adversity and uh, you know the trauma that can happen with our children who went through the earthquakes. So as a society, we, we need to address all of these things. Um, instead of just putting packages over you know, band-aids, we have to actually look at everything. Uh, but these, a lot of young people now, they have low self-esteem and emotional distress. Now, we're not teaching resilience. And resilience, as you may be aware, is something that conservatives are all about, uh, um, personal responsibility. So we have to actually teach children uh, about being resilient and change. Change happens. You know, when I mean, people are talking about the climate all the time, uh, you know, there's no climate crisis. It's actually change. The, the cycles change. And we used to teach this in our school, but we're not doing that anymore. It's like as soon as something happens, everybody panics and we don't need to panic. Things change all the time. And we well, that is an interesting perspective there, Helen, on that. And look, there's a lot of problems out there and I guess the how is the biggest question. How do we practically actually fix these? Because you talked about how they're all connected, but there's obviously not one solution that's going to fix everything. But let's talk about values. I mean, we are a Christian radio brand right now and our listeners want to know, you know, as Christians, if a Christian is making that choice to vote for a minor party, why should a Christian vote for the new Conservatives? Yeah, well, you know, Christians should vote for us because we uphold the traditional values of our society, including respect for parental rights. Uh, we cherish the children and family as well as the mothers and the father. We um, uphold both men and women, um, valuing life from conception to natural death. As the leader, I am the one who can help to address the root causes of all those issues we talked about because I have lived through them. I am also the one who can help others overcome because I have overcome. Now, not all of my strength has come from me. I used to think I was it was all in my strength, but uh, my strength actually masked a whole lifetime of hurts. And while I was strong and fiercely independent and very capable, I needed healing and we all know that only God can go that deep and our society needs that faith and that hope in something that's bigger than ourselves. Humans, we muck up all the time. I still muck up because I'm human. So new conservatives and values-based principles will lead people on the right path to a healthier society. Um, so yeah, we're not we're not career politicians. We're real people who have got real lives and real life experience. So please, we ask you to vote for new conservatives and we will put your values to work in parliament and in government. Well, thank you so much, Helen Horton, for having a conversation with me today. I'm sure we could talk for a very long time, but that's all we have time for today. Helen Horton joining me today from the New Conservatives Party and, of course, a reminder that elections are on the 14th of October. Thanks so much for your time today, Helen.